Hey, so just putting a video together on how to change the batteries in these SI boxes because I've been asked by several people in recent weeks. So I'll just go through what I do. Seems to have worked for several boxes and I've got another pile to do here this evening. But um, this is this is the trick anyway, as far as I'm concerned. And this is going off the actual PDF that uh, Sport Ident themselves provide on their website to do this job. So it is supported. Uh, you just have to be a little bit careful, there's no rocket science to it. Um, first thing you need are these batteries. These are uh, the lithium uh, something chloride batteries. Um, but basically it's these, these exact type of batteries. These are the ones that they use in the SI boxes when you buy them from the factory. And you can get those from Radionics and st several online stores sell those. Uh, so whatever price you can find. And you want the ones with the... Uh, the bare wire connectors on the ends they're they're pre-soldered to them and um, these are from a batch that came in a, on a cart like this uh we also have ones that come in boxes like this individual batteries it's a bit of a waste of packaging but sure there we go and um, the second thing you will need is uh these things here these are the seals the o-rings that go inside the two halves of the plastic shell of the si box you have to get these from sport ident there's no way around that you can sometimes save the seals when you're redoing them, but more often than not, you'll see in a second, taking the boxes apart will wreck the seals. So you're better to have a supply of these. They're not expensive. Um, I was like a fiver for 50 of them or something like that. So you can get those from Sport Ident themselves in Germany uh, if you just email them. Um, it's a bit awkward you have to pay by bank transfer, but look, it is what it is. Um, the last thing you need is this stuff here. This is the sealant that we're going to use to seal the box again and essentially it's a glue as well it glues the two halves of the box together this is the exact one that they use uh 3140 rtv coating it's like um silicon kind of but it's more sticky and it's also electronics safe if you get it on the electronics and stuff it shouldn't make a difference um that comes with a little nozzle and this stuff is quite sticky and after each use you'd want to clear out that nozzle so that it doesn't get blocked up because the stuff does dry into a hard plastic well a flexible plastic okay so those are the three things really you need uh, the batteries the o-rings and the sealant um, there's no other piece that you need really okay uh, that's all the components obviously sorry you need a soldering iron uh, solder and you need to know how to use them uh, you're gonna need a fairly flat knife as well to get the box open I'll hand over to my assistant here now to hold the camera so this is the SI box uh, these can be a bit tricky to get open sometimes they'll just pop open sometimes they won't but you want to get the tip of the knife in and then you can kind of go around the seal and eventually now this is one I've done before so this one's gonna pop pretty easily whoops I said that there we go the two halves just come apart like that and um, it may need a little bit of force you may need to run the knife around the edge on to break that old uh, seal uh, before you can get it open and um, now the o-ring is pretty intact in this one but it doesn't matter i'm still going to take it out because i'm going to replace it with a new one so i'll just get one corner up she comes take it off Get rid of all the bits of the old sealant. As you can see, I'm taking excellent anti-static precautions here. You know, I work with computers. Um, and just on this side as well, just make sure there's no old sealant. So we get rid of that. And right, I'm gonna clear up here and then we'll come back in a second and we'll get into the actual soldering. Okay, so something I just forgot to mention before I got the soldering stuff ready. This stuff here, you can get this from a couple of different electronics suppliers. Um, uh, I forget exactly which one I got, uh, but I'll, I'll put details when I put this video up. Um, it is the most expensive component. This, I think, cost me like 45 euro, this one tube of it. And now there's enough in it that will last for a long, long time. You, you use very little of it, but uh, that's the most expensive part. Everything else is actually relatively cheap. The batteries are maybe three euro pop, I think. Okay, we're gonna put that to the side. I have my box open, I've cleaned all my stuff off it, my iron is hot, I'm just going to get a bit of solder off here. Okay, just going to tin the iron a bit, 
I'll pause it there. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, sorry, I've got my little fan here so I don't breathe horrible stuff. Okay, so I'm just gonna desolder this. Uh, there's no magic here. The pads come off pretty okay. I don't really put much effort into cleaning up the old solder either. Now it is industrial sol uh, solder, so it just takes a little bit of time to, there, now it's starting to melt. One pad off. Second pad off. And there's my old battery. I'll just throw that to one side so I don't mix it up with the good ones. I'm just gonna, yeah. Okay, now get my new battery. One over here. Ah. Uh, I always make this mistake. <laughs> make a note of what way around the battery goes. The green bar goes to that side over there, okay? So, you can buy, they sell a little gauge to bend these wires in the right places, but uh, like it's not rock science, that, that's all you have to do there. Uh, little snips, I have a better snips than that. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So you gotta trim these roughly to length. over there and, and so it actually knows if, if you if you um touch the two ends to it it'll start beeping so that's what it will start doing in a second there once we uh solder it i'm just going to use the old solder here to tack this on and then i'm going to get a new solder Okay, and then I'm gonna do the same on the other side. It'll be beeping at me a bit here, but that's okay. Uh, just trying to get an angle on this, because I want to. Give myself a burn, nice. Okay, and at this point, if you turn over the box, oh no, not yet. Uh, where's my SI card? Uh, one second. <laughs> Always out of reach. Right. So I can uh, turn the box on now, and the box is back to life. And it won't, it'll, it'll still retain its code, it'll retain its settings. The only thing it won't retain is this clock. So I'm going to have to use SI config in a few minutes to, um, to set the clock on it again. But the, the control is functional now. So all I need to do is um, put it back together. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a little bead. I'm going to be quite sparing with this. Again, the advantage of this stuff is it's electronic safe, so even if I get a splash onto the board, in theory it shouldn't make a difference. Okay. And I get my new seal. Again, they sell a piece to help put this into place. Again, I don't see the need, it sits quite neatly into the little groove. It does start to get a bit messy now. Okay, 
that's in. I'm happy enough. It's not twisted or whatever. I'm just gonna put a little bit more on top. Because now I'm gonna use it to, to glue the two halves together essentially. snug fish and just wipe off the, uh, the excess or use it to seal it up fully. Yeah, that's a neat job. So that's done and um, like I said the only thing that needs to be done with that is it needs the time set again using Sportage and Config Plus. Um, and they say, I think I read in the instruction for this, 24 hours to, for full cure. So, but like, in all likelihood, that'll be waterproof in an hour or two. Um, but uh, best to do it overnight and then just leave them be. But that's it. That's really all I'll do. So uh, rinse and repeat for four more here for me. Um, but that's, if you want to do your own boxes, that's that's all you need to do to get them back on their feet again. And remember, what de the decision point for whether or not you need to do this or not is... When you put the control into Sported and Config, um, it gives you the voltage reading of the battery. It also gives you a battery percentage. Uh, they tell you to ignore that. It's, it's not accurate. Um, the voltage is the thing to go by. And they say, if you're using them in SI Air beacon mode, you want to replace the batteries when they go below 3.15 volts. If you're running them in normal, not SI Air, you want to replace the batteries when they get lower than 3.1 volt. So um, anything above that should be fine. And when you're basically, the way I do it, when I'm time syncing all the controls for each event, I basically just take a note of each voltage as I'm syncing the time on each one. And uh, any of them that have dropped below the threshold, I put them in a pile and I do them. Uh, and that means that we're constantly doing a couple each event for the last while anyway, because they're all kind of the same vintage. Um, but eventually they'll all be uh, new batteries and um, It'll be a while then before I do the next one. Okay, that's it.